So, and also you'll be able to see, I'm gonna post a full key now that my last person just took it. So I'm gonna post a really detailed key to help you out with those corrections as well. Um, this one was worth three points. You might wanna put plus three, so, and I will put that on the, the key as well. I'll tell you how many points and where they're coming from. All right, so the first one was, you were given the second derivative. You know what that tells you? It tells you about concavity, correct? And you're given that derivative. You don't need to take anything. We never go to the third derivative. I don't think ever. So it's either first um, or second. And it gives you the critical values. Um, so it says, and let f of x have first derivative critical numbers at. So it's telling you the critical numbers, correct? So you know that at critical values, that's where we have our maxes and mins, right? They're telling you where those are. Some of you guys started making a sign chart. There is no sign analysis. And you plotted like where the zeros were and then you plugged them in the second derivative and that has nothing to do with the second derivative test. So go ahead and write no sign line, okay? Um, for the second derivative test, it's about analyzing the second derivative which means analyzing concavity at those turning points. So you know the function is either turning or plateauing at these three places, correct? It doesn't matter which, you don't make a sign line. All you do is take that second derivative and you plug in a critical number. You know the derivative was zero at negative two. You just don't know if it went like this, whether it went like this, or whether it went like that. So anyone who made a sign line and started analyzing positives and negatives on their sign line, that's zero out of three, because that's not the second derivative test. It just says plug negative two into the second derivative, which would be three times four minus four, which is equal to eight. Your second derivative is eight at this critical value, correct? Which means it's greater than zero. And if our second derivative is greater than zero, are we concave up or concave down at that turning point? Concave up, okay, like a cup. Which means that that critical value that occurred, or that possible turning point, actually was a turning point. We were concave up at a place where the derivative was zero, which means there was a minimum there. So if you took the three numbers and put them into the second derivative, you actually were guaranteed one and a half out of three, regardless of whether you interpreted it right. You knew what to do with those critical values. So when you get your uh, test back, if you made a sign line, you were out all three of them. All right, but if you started plugging in, um, then I do F double prime, I see at that critical value what my curvature is, and I get a negative four, which is less than zero. So when a second derivative is less than zero, I'm concave down like a crown, which means at that place where the derivative was zero, I turned and went back down. So this would mean there was a relative what there? Max. Some people went max, min, max, and I gave two out of three. I'm like, okay, you get what the second derivative is telling you, you just have the, the results mixed up. So there are a lot of zeros out of three on this because people didn't use the second derivative test. They tried to use the first derivative test and there's no first derivative here. Correct? So you couldn't plug numbers in, so sign lines are out. And then my, my number two gives me also an eight, which is greater than zero. So I'm concave up like a cup, which meant the min. All right? So it's basically three points for doing these three things. But if you had a wrong analysis, I took the one off. Does that make sense? That's it for that one. The second, and there was one exactly like it on the review. I remember because you were working with it or somebody back there and I came and helped you. It was almost the same problem. It's just the second derivative was a different function. So make sure when you're doing those reviews, you're not just doing them to get them done, you're like internalizing them. The next most missed one was, or one of them, the MBT, which we knew was going to be on there, correct? Right? I think I mentioned the MVP about five times and it was pretty heavily hit in all the reviews. It was heavily hit in Delta Math. Um, this one was worth four points. So you left it blank, you're out four, that's a lot. So I'll tell you where the four came from. The first was just knowing 
You didn't have to verify that you could use it or anything, because it says to find C that satisfy, which means we're not worried about continuity or differentiability or anything. We're just knowing that the slope of the secant line has to be the slope of the tangent line somewhere on that interval. So whatever f of x looks like, I'm just going to make a fake one, and you should too. Whatever it does, I always make my favorite fake function, right? On the interval from 2 to 5, so from here to here, the slope of the secant line, there has to be at least one place in this open interval where the slope of the tangent line is the same. And that's what you're trying to find. Where does that happen? And we drew that picture a bunch. So make sure, again, we're trying to go towards getting stuff done to totally getting it. And that takes a while, actually. So um, slope of the secant line isn't calculus. It's just y2, whatever the y value is here at 5f of 5, minus y1, 2f of 2, all over x2 minus x1. That has to equal the slope of the tangent line. What's the slope of the tangent line? The what? Derivative. So there was one point just for knowing, even if some people, there's maybe one or two people who just wrote mc equals p equals m I gave them one point, because that actually is what the m t does. So then there was a point for calculating the average rate of change. And you just plug those numbers into f. 6 minus 2 is 4, minus 6 minus 5 is 1, okay? All over 5 minus 2, that equals f prime of x. And there was one point for the f prime. So some people just um, found a 1, and I gave a point for evaluating that. I directly found the slope of the secant line. So I have to figure out Basically, again, this isn't the graph of that function, it's fake, but this guy right now has a slope of 1, the, the secant line. I have to figure out where my tangent line would have that same slope. So I have to set 1 equal to the derivative of this. So there was another point for finding the derivative. So the derivative of 6 is 0, right? And I think, Jordan, you were the one who started to do that on this side, and then you doubted yourself and crossed it all off. I still give you a point, but it's a good um, learning thing because on the AP test, if you cross it off, they don't look at it, right? And if you should cross, you should waste time in AP. Be like, oh, I gotta restart my brain, just cross it off. I did though. I think I gave you the point because I was like, oh, she found it over here, and then you're like, that would be. I think it was you, okay. right? <laughs> so, and I think you did it correctly too. So over on the side, I actually am taking the derivative of 6 minus 10x to the negative first. This goes to 0, so I don't care. This comes out front, which is the positive 10x to the negative 2. So you should set that equal to 10 over x squared. Okay? Then you're just solving it. It's algebra 1. And you would get x squared equals 10, right? And then, some of you lost the point because you said this was the answer. And I kind of only did it because you have to really be careful. And there are a lot of them in our Delta Math practice where it would have given you a red X for that, that answer. What's wrong with it? One of them's not in the interval. Yeah, so you got to watch out for that. And I really feel bad. Like, that's something I feel bad taking points off for. But your AP reader will take them off. So I want to make sure you guys are learning those details. That's why I let you do corrections, because those details are really what I'm hoping you're correcting, not concepts. Like, I'd hope after that whole chapter we have a concept of the MBT. The people who left that one blank, I went, yikes, <laughs> right? But if you tried it and had it generally down, um, I tried to be nice, but I did have to take a point off for the plus or minuses. Did some of you remember writing plus or minus? Yeah, super easy point to get back. But So that was our second one. That means that this C occurred at the square root of 10. Now, did any questions about that? Because that one surprised me. The second derivative test is every year. Like, for the last 12 years, that's been one of the most missed. Yep. Well, we have that in our science test. If we did it right, I just became... Nope. Nope. Okay. If you just launched into the math, okay. I was fine. And actually, if you skip this arithmetic, I was fine. I was looking for a slope of a secant. I was looking for a correct derivative. 
where is it? Right here, I was looking for a positive 10 and some concept of setting them equal, whether you did it with words or with, yeah. So that's a good question. The biggest one and the most missed wasn't part A. I think everybody got part A right. Like maybe a random one or two people. You knew to analyze the first, there might have been one or two who took a derivative of this in part A, but I'm not gonna talk about part A. We're gonna go right to part B. B and C were the two. I also made this one work two points, and this one work one, and that's where some people went over 100%. <coughs> Sawyer, weren't you over 100? Yeah, because they picked up, a, I, I put a bonus couple in here. One of them, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> yeah, there were, there were, there were, like I said, they were great, they were good, and they were ugly. There was nothing kind of in that funky kind of soup. There was, wasn't much in the 60s to low 70s. They were usually mid 70s to, there. they were great. All right, and actually you might think 70s are bad. They're actually not. And when you take some, they go to 80s. Um, they're good. Let's work on this one though. And it says, find the minimum value of the slope. So you have to be very careful. I want you, I'm going to draw an arrow here. The slope of the function is f prime. I'm trying to find where this function is at a minimum. We've been doing absolute maxes and mins of f quite a bit, correct? When I do a max or min of f, I evaluate it at the endpoints. This doesn't have any because I'm open at zero and going to infinity. So there's no endpoints for me to evaluate, correct? But I also need anywhere where f has a critical value. Wouldn't that be f prime? And don't we find where f prime equals what? Zero or doesn't exist, correct? So if my function that I'm trying to max or minimize is f prime itself. I would need to evaluate f prime at the endpoints, but there aren't any, and find anywhere where its derivative equals what? Sorry. Zero, or doesn't exist, correct? So I really need to go take my second derivative right here. Some of you did it down here, with the correct answer, and so I kind of was nice, and that's why I put a plus one for, well, there's a correct second derivative, it's just in the wrong slot. Uh, AP wouldn't do that, but I did, because it was actually kind of a lot of work. You had to go do the quotient rule on this guy, so I need to consider the critical values of my function, but my function is f prime, and that's the problem, it was the left, and now I would say, be careful with what level you're on. My function I'm trying to minimize is f prime. I need its derivative. All right, so I do low, v high. If you remember doing k1, remember doing the quotient rule? You picked up a point somewhere. It might not have been, but I, I, was, I was nice with it because it actually is a little messy. So you do low d high minus high d low. All right, I see some BCers watching this. I don't know. I think this is the same test as last year, kind of shake them up. But. Uh, I draw a line and I square below. And when you clean up the top, you ended up getting, I'm not going to do algebra one, but you ended up getting x squared minus 16 when you clean up the entire top. F prime has two critical values. Because zero doesn't count because in the prompt it says, well, it's positive. So you didn't need to consider zero or any negatives. If you did, I just crossed it out. That was nice. That's actually pretty nice on most of it. <laughs> right. Anyway, this has two critical values, right? They are critical values of f prime. It's where its derivative equals zero. At plus or minus four. Which one am I not going to consider? Negative. If you did, I just kind of crossed off that part of your sign line, and I still gave you the points. So we are looking from open at zero to infinity, right? And we've got our critical value at 4. And so now we're going to analyze what the function f prime is doing. So I'm going to go back and plug numbers in to each of these. When I plug in a 3, I will go negative, 9 minus a 2, over here is positive. 
correct? So it says, find the minimum value if a function f prime is decreasing to 4 and then increasing on out to infinity, where was its absolute minimum? At what? 4. And that's where you got the two points. One for taking the second derivative and one for saying at x equals 4. The question actually said, though, to find the minimum, and that's where a bonus came in. Because that was actually a lot of work just to get that one point, correct? So I think it was, Sawyer, you must have said what the minimum was, correct? And that's where he earned a bonus point. If you did that, I was like, boy, you really paid attention to the details. But remember, you want the minimum of the slope. So where do I plug that for? Not into f double, that's where it's zero, into the slope function. And if you plug a four in there, you get negative two. So it's actually a min of negative 2 at x equals 4. Those of you who did that, I gave a bonus right there. All right? Some people had this right answer. And I only gave them one out of two points because they started looking at the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all these whole numbers and plugging them into f prime. And they saw that it actually bottomed out at 4 and then started to get higher. So do you know what the fault in that logic is? It actually works for this problem, but it's only because my min occurred at a whole number. It, you just kind of, but I liked your thought. <laughs> so does anyone remember doing that? Like they started plugging them. I liked the thought, but I was like, mm. and I, that I don't know if College Board would give that to you or not. I don't know. I was like, I like it, but not quite what you were supposed to do. All right. For part C, I only made it one point because I could answer it right from there, correct? I would have been concave up right here where my second derivative was positive. So F is concave up when it's second derivative, which I took, and I made a sine line 4 over there. So the answer was just on 4 to infinity, so I made that work one point. But some of you skipped B or had it wrong, but then you to take a second derivative. So that was kind of where you might have, I kind of put a little plus one in there to pick up. It was funky for me to grade. All right, so are we good on that one? Because that one was a big hit. The reading of the table went great for most, but those of you who didn't read it right, uh, actually this one, pretty much everybody had, so I'm not gonna talk about that. Same with these two, unless we didn't have time to finish. The inflection point, would have occurred where the second derivative changed sign, so at 1. So there's one inflection point. And then concave down and increasing, you need to have a positive first derivative and a negative. So most of you got those two questions. It was right in here. All right? So when it says, what are the critical values of g? Over half of the people went to g prime, went right here, and said at x equals 1, because, and this is correct, so you can write it down, because g prime equals zero. And I gave you one out of two. Can somebody tell me why you think? We've always said critical values are where the first derivative equals zero or, or doesn't exist. And there are two places where the function's defined, which means it's not an asymptote, where the derivative doesn't exist. What occurs on the graph if the derivative doesn't exist but the function does there? It's one of those what? Sharp turns or a vertical tangent, correct? So that critical values occur at those places. So I would say also at x equals zero and there should have been an x equals two and then you would have added over here or d and e. If you didn't put the zero one, I didn't stop you. Because it's kind of on the edge, and I think maybe you're thinking, well, I don't know what happened over here. Uh, so I was okay with that. So if you didn't put the zero, you weren't stopped. If you didn't put one or the other, I stopped you. Okay? Then it says, at these critical values, is there a relative min, max, or neither? So let's look at one. Relative min, max, or neither? Neither. Correct? There's actually a plateau, and some of you told me that. But you would just say at x equals 1, neither, and why is it? 
It's not because the first derivative is negative. It's because it doesn't do what? Change sums. Yep. Uh, neither g prime doesn't change sums. The other one that you can explain is over here at 2. At 2, if you were decreasing and then increasing, correct? At a place where the derivative doesn't exist, could that be a min? Totally. If you were decreasing and continue to decrease, that's that vertical tangent thing. But this has a change in sign. So you'd have to say at x equals 2, what would there be? A relative what? Min. Uh, because if you didn't discuss this, and we actually couldn't because you didn't know what happened on the other side. So I was just looking for those two to be explained. All right, and then these two were easy. This one was worth two points, and then this one was just worth one because it didn't say you had to explain. Did anything want me to go through these bottom two? No? All right, I'm going to be done. So that's the 